Yeah, so we're almost at the end of the conference. So thank you to the organizers uh, for putting this event together. And thank you everyone for your interesting talks. Mine is going to be a little different. Uh, I'm not an educator. I work for an industrial company. We manufacture equipment to apply hot glue, like you're seeing on that video. Uh, hot glue, for those of you who are not familiar with the term, is basically this. I think most people uh, have seen this uh, at some point in their lives, either at home or maybe on TV. Uh, but when we apply it industrially, uh, obviously the machines and the processes are a little more complex, and so are the adhesive patterns uh, that we apply on the substrates sometimes. So for instance, in this particular video, you're watching uh, the adhesive described a spiral path, spiral path like this. And um, I was interested in knowing how changing the physical parameters of the application would change the, cha would change the shape of the, the adhesive pattern. And uh, what I found is that basically you can uh, combine all physical parameters into one single mathematical parameter, and then uh, the, the shape of the, of the adhesive pattern just changes like this. And we're looking at many different things here, but one of the things we're looking at is the fact that uh, if we focus here on the green line, and then uh, we focus on these two particular points here, this point and this point, we can see that, sorry, uh, we can see that uh, there is more adhesive there because uh, the adhesive passes twice through those points. And what I found also is that those points, uh, those two points here in the adhesive pattern correspond to these two points here on, on this function. Um, so basically, if I change uh, the parameter like this, these two points here correspond to these two intersections here. And if I enlarge the parameter a little bit like that, then there is no intersection. So these two do not cross each other. Um, so I was interested also in calculating the critical values, uh, the extrema of this function at which uh, this happens. Uh, so I actually came up with a numerical method to do that. And um, so I started playing more and more with these geometries and I tried changing the shape. So in this case, uh, the adhesive uh, applicator would not be translated in space, but rotated in space. Then you have two different parameters and the and this is how the adhesive pattern changes. Actually, you can get uh, very remarkable figures. Um, geometry looks a little more complex, but actually the mathematics is uh, more simple in this case, in the sense that this function here, and again, uh, the intersections on the blue line and on the green line uh, are exactly as before. And this function here is actually a polynomial. So in this particular case, you can actually uh, calculate a few cases analytically. So these are all the cases that you can calculate analytically. The rest need to be calculated numerically. But I don't want to get too much into the mathematics. Uh, this talk is not about that. Um, basically, what I'm trying to say is that this was my first experience with JSX graph. This here and uh, this right there. And basically, my background is uh, I'm not a programmer. Uh, I've never worked as a programmer. I have always programmed for fun at home, but that's not my job. Uh, so my uh, knowledge of programming is limited, uh, but this was very easy to do. And I was amused by how easy it was to do the programming with JSX Graph. And so I started using it a little bit more and a little bit more. And I actually ended up uh, writing an academic paper in which I made extensive use of JSX Graph. Uh, I have only recently, very recently, submitted that for publication. I hope it gets published soon, and when it does, I will share it with the creators of JSX Graph uh, so that you can keep track if you want. Um, but at the same time, and also obviously in, in the publication, all the source code is made available and free for the public, so anyone can use whatever they want. But at the same time, I always thought that probably at some point I would end up using using this in the company that I work for. And uh, that's the case with the two applications that, that some people might have seen in the abstract of this talk already. And so that happened about a year ago. Uh, we launched a new product. And this product happened to be a little different to most of the other products we have. And what that meant for us is that we had to teach everyone 
how to use it. So the, the salespeople would have to learn when they could sell that. And the service technicians uh, would need to learn how to adjust it. And that's what uh, these applications are for. So for instance, uh, this first application, I call it application planner. It lets me plan an application with some requirements from the customer. So for instance, I will click here on clear all and I will introduce some parameters here. So one customer could say that his product is maybe 1,000 or maybe one meter long. And there is a gap between products of maybe 50 millimeters. And the speed of his line, of his production line is maybe, let us say, uh, 70 meters per minute. And uh, he wants to apply an 800 millimeter long adhesive bead on the substrate, on the product, but not like that, uh, center. This is a very typical case. And he might dot it just to save some adhesive. He might dot it or not. So if he does dot it, uh, he will have to introduce the dotting parameters, obviously. And once I have introduced these parameters, I immediately get these calculations here, which, is, which are calculations that always need to be done. And before we had these applications, our salespeople will do those by hand, maybe with a calculator. But that's prone to error because anyone can make a mistake when you calculate things fast. Um, this looks better, it's more reliable, and it's also more intuitive and visual. So basically what these four calculations mean is that uh, when I say that the peak frequency is 58 hertz, what I'm saying is that while I'm dotting here, I'm applying 58 dots per second. Uh, but on average, the frequency is lower than that. It's 44 hertz, so 44 dots per second on average, because obviously one cycle of application is from here to here. So some of the time is idle time. I'm not dotting at all. So the average frequency is lower. And when I say minimum uptime of 4.3 milliseconds and minimum downtime of 30 milliseconds, what that means is that it takes four milliseconds opening the valve to produce this adhesive dot and it takes 13 milliseconds between uh, one dot and another. So um, I can actually change that life. I can go here to 15, I can go here to 50, come back to 20, come back to five. And uh, these are the calculations that uh, people need to make before offering this product. And once these calculations are made, then I have these four different parameters here, 58, 44, 4.3, 12.9. I can click here on performance and I can see whether that, that the specific application is feasible with this applicator, with this product or not. Uh, I will click here on example one, which is an example that, uh, that I had prepared beforehand. And uh, well, this is what the application look la looks like. And if I go to the performance tab, uh, what I see is that now I have to choose the viscosity of my adhesive because uh, different adhesives behave differently. And I have uh, here some results from the laboratory. So this would be like the data sheet of the new product. And uh, this is the legend over here. My application is the blue bar. So I have the parameters that I saw before, 400, 450 hertz, 237, 1.3, 0.9. are also written here, represented on the blue bar. And the one I'm missing, which is 237, is written over here in red. So now I can choose my adhesive, where my adhesive lays uh, the viscosity. So if I say, for instance, that the viscosity of my adhesive is 1,400 milli, uh, millipascal second, then uh, I should be fine. I can do this application because the frequency that I'm requiring from the applicator is lower than the maximum frequency it can give for that specific viscosity. Whereas the minimum times are higher than the, or the opening and closing times are higher than the minimum times that it can achieve. So this is feasible. Uh, this would not be feasible, for instance, because the frequency that I need to have is higher than what the applicator can do. So this would not be feasible. And on top of that, I see here that the average frequency is marked in red, 237 is bigger than 230, because there is a limitation for thermal reasons uh, on the uh, average frequency of 230 hertz. So for instance, in this case, if I was a salesman, a uh, salesperson, what I would do is say, well, you can increase the gap in the application. You would reduce the throughput a little bit, but in that case, uh, the average frequency is below 230 and we will not run into thermal problems. 
Uh, there is a final tab in the application, which is the help tab, uh, which has is just some text explaining how to use the application. It includes uh, an acknowledgement of the use of um, the ESX graph. And uh, this is basically uh, what the first application is about and what it looks like. And typically, uh, a salesperson will have this on his tablet and uh, he will he would visit a customer and it helps them both evaluate whether this product is right for them. Uh, and it also looks very good. It's, uh, and, and it prevents errors, like I said, before, because if you have nothing, if you don't have a tool like this, and you visit a customer, and then you have to do the calculations on the fly, and maybe anyone can make a mistake at some point, and you cannot visualize it either. So it's not easy to spot mistakes, uh, but visually. Uh, so this is really helpful for, for, for them. And the second application I programmed about a year ago uh, is this other one. I call it the parameter exploration. This is not for salespeople. This is more for technical people. This is for more this is more for uh, uh, service technicians and people like that who need to actually adjust the parameters of the application to get the best results. Because one thing is to say that I have already seen that uh, this application is feasible, that I can actually do this application and um, achieve what I want. But the other question is how? How do I uh, change the parameters of application to get that result that I need? And that's why I programmed this second application. All the parameters of application, physical parameters of application are here and I can change them and see what changing them means, what uh, it means in the applicator. I can see how the valve would open and the adhesive would be released and I can see some ratings here. I can see uh, how it affects the performance in different aspects. And I have to give a warning here uh, that I have actually changed the texts here. They don't really make sense right now. These are not the real texts that we use because that information is not public. Uh, that's same as uh, here. Uh, this data is not the real data. So the real application looks exactly the same, but the data, the numbers are made up, are not real numbers. So if I go back to, to the application that uh, we were looking at now, um, this is helpful because these parameters are interrelated and you get a new product and you have to learn how to use it and it's not always easy because for instance in this particular scenario that i have here with this set of parameters if i have a low, a low pressure and i have this efficiency here and i want to increase that efficiency i might increase the pressure and see that the efficiency does increase as well so the conclusion is very clear uh, when I go from low pressure to medium pressure, the efficiency increases. But that's, that can be problematic though, because uh, in a different scenario, maybe some other parameter has changed. And now I want to do the same. I want to increase the efficiency by increasing from low pressure to medium pressure. And it doesn't work. Uh, the efficiency actually decreases. And this happens in reality. And if people don't understand why or how, uh, obviously, they cannot use the product, but this can be compensated with other parameters. For instance, if I increase the uptime here a little bit, then I go back to the behavior expected. Uh, from low pressure to medium pressure, the efficiency increases as well. And uh, the text change, as you have seen, as I change the parameters. So as you're seeing what happens and you're seeing uh, what happens to the ratings here, you're also reading why it happens. Uh, so you're understanding everything. Whereas uh, if you're in the machine, if you're in a factory or in the laboratory and you're with the machine, you're, first of all, you're not seeing the machine inside. So when you change a parameter like this, you don't really see what's going on inside. And second, um, you don't really understand and no one is telling you how, why things happen. So you think you see things happening and some things uh, could be very bad. Like for instance, if I have, if I have this specific uh, combination of parameters, uh, you can see what happens here. You can see that the needle belly moves, the, the valve belly opens. You see this moves a little bit, but it doesn't really properly open. So no adhesive is coming out. Uh, so basically people run into these problems and they get stuck and they don't understand what's going on and uh, people freak out basically. And that's uh, why these applications are, are very helpful because uh, with this, you can change the parameters, learn how the 
learn how to use the applicator. You can read what's going on, you can understand. And um, this was a necessity that uh, we had at some point. Uh, I think what I'm basically saying is that even though I'm not a teacher, a professor, I'm not an educator, but uh, anywhere you are in life, uh, you always need to transmit information. And that's what JSX uh, Graph is uh, very useful for. Um, I also want to say that uh, in, in this particular case, these applications, the way we distribute this uh, among our employees is they come as a single HTML file. So this application is one single HTML file. Uh, so JSX graph is embedded there. And uh, so are, for example, the images. So these images here or these images over here. Uh, they are embedded in the in the HTML code. So uh, each HTML file is one standalone application. It doesn't need an internet connection. It doesn't need any other files. And also, what the code code looks like um, in this case is uh, it basically looks like this. This is all code from JSX Graph, not from me. And actually, the code I wrote is a one-liner down here. Uh, which has been obfuscated because we don't share this. Uh, so when, when, whenever an employee gets uh, the application, all he gets is this, so no one can actually read into it or modify it, which is not necessarily what I love, but uh, it's what we needed to do in this case. So unlike in the paper that I wrote, for instance, where all code is made available for everyone, in these applications here, um, uh, we're not really sharing them with uh, anyone. And that's one of the main motivations why I decided to, to participate in the conference and in this talk, because it kind of felt wrong to use uh, JSX Graph, uh, which is a product of very hard work from other people, and just use it and uh, don't even acknowledge it or say it uh, and say thank you. So this, uh, this, uh, this conference is for me, and this talk is an opportunity to say, uh, thank you to everyone who has been involved in the development of JSS Graph because it's been very useful for us. And um, basically, I think I'm basically done with this talk uh, and I can show anything else uh, or, or I can show anything in, with, in, in, with more detail if you, if you want, but I'll be happy to, to take your questions. Uh,